Hey, what's up guys? This is Neil Reyes and I want to welcome you to today's episode of Champions Minute. You know, with all the talk of fitness and healthy lifestyles around us every day, have you ever stopped to ask yourself what God thinks about that? Well, we're going to talk about that today. Get ready. Drop the Today's topic that we're going to be discussing is called Got Fit. Again, today's topic we're discussing is called Got Fit. I thought this was the neatest title when the Lord gave this to me. When I was before Him and asking, Lord, what do you want me to teach your people? He had showed me that He wanted me to ask, Got Fit. <laughs> I said, Got Fit. He said, Got Fit. And what He began to show me was, in this world, we have so much right now about health and fitness. And honestly, I think that that's fantastic. In fact, I will tell you that since this year, I made a commitment that in 2017, I was going to work to get in good shape so that I could honor my temple that the Lord has given me. It wasn't a New Year's resolution. It was a goal that I set before myself to commit myself to making healthier lifestyle choices in the manners in which I eat and how I exercise so that I can be around to enjoy the things God has blessed me with, to fulfill the calling He's given me, and to be around for my family so that they can enjoy hanging out with dad and doing the things we need. But I also felt impressed he wanted me to get in shape so that I could be a good witness. I'm going to describe what I mean by that. When the Lord first started talking to me about God fit, he showed me that fitness was his original idea. <laughs> Some people might think, how is fitness God's idea? Well, he designed you and he designed the body and he designed you to be fit. So... I think is God's idea. Now, what I will tell you is that I think that we've had this fitness explosion, so to speak, across the world. And it's certainly not isolated to the United States. It is across the world. And I think that that is amazing. And I think it's awesome, to be honest with you. My family's into it. My daughter loves going to the gym with me, who's 15 years old. She's all into it. We have friends that are into it. I can almost go just about anywhere. And if there's one thing I can speak to people about, if I start talking about fitness, it seems like everyone is into fitness in some manner or another. Now, some people might be out there be thinking like, I'm not into fitness at all. Well, maybe not. But when we talk about healthy eating or healthy lifestyles, you know, we all enjoy some good greasy food once in a while. We're from America. <laughs> But the fact is, we understand the importance and we're learning at least the importance of healthy, fit, and active lifestyles. But God is also very interested in a healthy, fit, and active lifestyle. Now, before you turn this off, this ain't an infomercial. <laughs> this is not me fat shaming anybody because, I mean, goodness, I, I'm working on losing weight myself here. Okay, This is about us talking about God fit. And with God, whenever he asks us something or tells us something, he always has a much deeper meaning than we do. And what I will tell you is when he told me got fit, he started speaking to me about whether or not you got fit. And by got fit, he means this. As a believer, we have three different areas to who we are. We have our natural body. We have our soul, which is comprised of our mind, our will and emotions. And then we have our spirit. God is about completeness. He doesn't want you complete in an area, but incomplete in others. God is about completeness. And with completeness, He wants you to be complete in all areas of your life. He desires for you to be complete spiritually, where you are fit as your spiritual man, fit in His Word, understanding His Word, knowing the promises of His Word, and built up spiritually. He wants you fit in your soul, your souls, your mind, your will, and your emotions. In other words, He wants you to have a healthy and fit thought process. He wants you to have a healthy and fit process of your will, which is how you make choices. And He wants you to have a, a healthy um, uh, emotional set, which is your emotional life. And with that, He also wants you to have a healthy and fit body, which is your temple that He's spoken to us about. So when I speak about this, I'm not necessarily targeting just your spirit or just your soul or just your body, but I am talking about the complete man. And in order to do so, I want to take you to a scripture and read it to you. This is going to be out of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and we're starting at verse 23. Ready? Read. 
Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. When it talks about being found blameless before God, blameless means that we're able to go before God and have a clear conscience before Him. But that means in three different areas. He just told us in this verse that you're to be blameless in your spirit, your soul, and your body. It doesn't do a believer good to go before God and say, God, I am clean spiritually, but I am way out of shape, and I lived a lifestyle that led me to an early death, and I'm here before you way before I was supposed to. No, that's not what we're supposed to do. Again, I'm not fat shaming. I'm not jumping on anybody. If I feel like I'm stepping on your fitness lifestyle or your health lifestyle, I'm not doing that. But let me explain to you the importance of this. When people live unhealthy lifestyles in any three of those areas, not just physically, in any three of those areas, they run the risk of shortening their life. And if they shorten their life and don't live out their full measure of days as God intended, how many people are going to be counting on you on the other side of that obedience who needed to hear the instruction you had for them that you learned through life? but you can't give it to them because you're gone. I will tell you that I've met people, especially females, who their fathers have gone on and passed and they're now no longer on this earth anymore. And they have encountered times where they really needed some advice and their father is who they wanted to go to, but they couldn't because their father wasn't around. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that the father lived an unhealthy lifestyle and they were gone too early. That's not at all what that means. I'm simply giving that as an example of what it means to have people who need you around, who need the advice you can share with them and the advice you can give them. If you have that ability to control that, then why don't we? I know that me as a believer, I want to stand blameless before the Lord. And if the only person that this message reaches or teaches is me, then I'm okay with that. Because when God gave me this word, he shared it with me. And as he shared it with me, I knew it spoke to me before it spoke to anyone else. As we get quiet and get still and get before God and listen to his voice, he'll give us the instructions that we need for life. Whether we choose to follow it or not is a different situation. But whether we can hear God in the first place is up to us. We've got to get quiet before him. And we need to become obedient to hear and do His Word once we hear it. You can't just be a hearer of the Word. You must be a doer also. Remember, someone is always waiting on the other side of your obedience. Today I want to challenge you by going before God and simply asking Him, what are the areas of your life that you're not fit? And wherever you're not fit, then ask Him to help grow you in those areas. I believe you'll find this as something that grows as a desire of your heart as it has with me, as something that you'll be excited and encouraged about. And it won't just be a life of discipline, but that discipline will soon turn into a happiness that you are so excited about the things you're seeing God do in your life and the new ways that He's moving in you. It could be that fit, physically fit, you're ahead of everybody, that you're way ahead of all of us. But it could be that maybe you need some work in the spiritual realm. Or it could be that spiritually you're very fit and you're physically fit, but your emotions really need some work. You're still carrying along some baggage from the past of some hurts. Maybe you're still making some bad choices, you know. Maybe your thoughts are all over the place on things they shouldn't be. So maybe you need to work on your soul. Or maybe you're the person that's spiritually fit and you're healthy in the soul, but the body needs a little work. <laughs> Guys, I hope you found this teaching encouraging. As always, we want to recommend and, and invite you to check out our website at neilreyes.com where you can check out all of our past teachings. In addition, you can follow us on social media at YouTube or Facebook at Neil Reyes Ministries, or you can find us on Twitter at Neil underscore Reyes. We want to remind you that Jesus is Lord and He loves you, and so do we. Thank you, and have a blessed day. Drop to